Hey everybody, it's Emily the Crazy Worm Lady. I am here today with the coffee only bin for an update. This is why I like to leave the bubble wrap across my bins that don't have lids. Because see how nice and moist it keeps the bedding as opposed to the bedding that's around the edge. Great way to hold in moisture if you decide not to have lids on your bins. Uh, it's worked out quite well for me since I've started leaving lids off of most of my bins. So definitely you can see the exact line of where it was. So I've been noticing some of my beetles lately. And I did see a few when I first turned the camera on climbing across the top here. But now I can't seem to spot any of them. But this is all castings right up along the top here. So these worms have been, little worm there. These worms have been coming up right below that bubble wrap and leaving us these really nice castings. And this is our blue worm bin. So these are Perionyx or Indian blue worms. And we've been feeding them with quite a bit of coffee. And it looks like they're doing quite well. They're all through these areas of coffee. This is just the first handful I pulled up. And I can still feel some grounds in here, but it's definitely has the softer feel like the um, castings have. So I think they're definitely working through it. So let's see if we can get some more up here. I will say these castings feel a little bit muddy, so they feel a little bit wet to me. But definitely not overly wet. I mean, you can see they'll, they'll flake apart. Just, um, they just feel a little muddy. I can't really put my finger on how exactly to explain it. Dense, maybe, is the word. Feel a little bit dense. But, um, I still think this could even be screened if it needed to be. But I noticed there's a lot of baby worms, and... Part of what we wanted to look at with this experiment was whether or not coffee inhibited the reproduction of worms. Because some people have theorized that and have kind of advised against feeding large amounts of, of coffee to your worms. Um, so for me, seeing baby worms is a pretty good sign that the worms are able to handle it okay. This, I think, is a matted piece of dried up coconut core, but there's some worms in there, so I'm not going to break it up. They'll work on that on their own. But the worms are really spread all throughout here. And you can see, you know these are blue worms because of how fast they move. Um, they're just quite feisty little worms. See that guy down there? They just fly. As soon as you think you have a group of them, they just all start running on you. But they're even through some of this bedding I have down here. I see a few pot worms. We wanted to kind of monitor if we saw any sort of bug problems. But honestly, this bin has less pests than what I've been seeing in some of my other bins lately. Because I've been having fruit fly issues um, and beetle issues lately. And I'm not seeing too many of those um, in comparison to what I'm seeing in my other bins. But I'm going to do my typical kind of turn everything up. A lot of people are not into, what are they saying, it fluffing the bin. Um, but I am definitely somebody who likes to fluff the bins up to assess the conditions in the bin. I just feel like it's a really good way to make sure that your bins aren't overfed. And to make sure that there's not standing liquid. Now see, this is unprocessed coffee grounds. Because you can feel it's very gritty. But again, nothing seems seems problematic in here. So these guys are definitely going to get some more food today. Um, they have a lot of bedding in here, so I don't know how much extra bedding I'm going to add per se. Um, and even though I say it feels dense, it it parts of it feel dry. It's kind of an odd 
I can't really put my finger on how to explain it. It's strange. But like you can see right here, these are a group of juvenile worms. So from all signs, it looks like they are reproducing. And they're just thriving so far. So um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pump sprayer because I'm going to mix this really, really well. And sorry for my arm, just trying to mix this up. Uh, get my pump sprayer. I'm going to mix this top to bottom, kind of get a feel for the moisture content throughout the whole thing. We'll add a little bit of bedding, a whole lot of coffee, and then leave them for another week because, you know, there, there are chunks like this that are still left, but probably because it was put in here, it's one big hunk. But the worms are all in it, so we know that they're processing it and that they could handle another another feeding. So I did find this hunk of unprocessed coffee grounds, and this is what I'm talking about with pot worms. You'll see people post questions on forums. Oh my gosh, I see all these little baby worms in my bin. And there's one there. There's multiple down here by the middle of my hand. Some down at the bottom. There's one up top. And they do kind of resemble, they're similar in size to baby worms. However, you see that they are pure white. And the difference between a baby worm and these pot worms is that baby worms have just a little pinkish hue. You can kind of see the bloodline running down their body. But these are just pot worms. They tend to be very common in acidic bins, um, but sometimes you can't even really put your finger on what causes them. They seem to love avocado, and to my knowledge, avocado is not really an acidic food. So um, they're not something to be overly concerned with in your bin, but I do like to point out to you guys certain things that uh, are common questions that I see, and one is regarding potworms, and what do I do about the potworms? Personally, unless they're really crazy in numbers, I don't really think you have to do much of anything. Some people actually breed to try to get potworms to feed like their aquarium fish, so it's not a problem. So I think I've thoroughly ticked off all these worms by turning everything up, but I just wanted to get a feel for the moisture, and it feels pretty good, but I am going to add, I think, a little bit of water today um, when I feed. So I'm just kind of knocking some of this stuff up. We're going to feed down on this side over here. Adjust my camera a little bit. So I'm going to grab some shredded newspaper. I will warn you, shredded newspaper tends to mat up um, when it's not mixed in with stuff. So um, I don't have any cardboard mixed in here, which I, I usually do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sprinkle some of my dry mix because... That will prevent it from being overly acidic, which will kind of help control the numbers of those pot worms, things like that. Um, and then I'm just going to take some of these castings and I'm going to mix and kind of add some bulk to this newspaper because the bulk will keep it from getting quite so compacted. I don't want to tick off some of these worms that I'm mixing in here. Try to be gentle with them, but... They'll be okay, especially when they find out what they're getting fed right now. So I was thinking about feeding a larger feeding, but I think I'm going to hold back from doing too, too much. Um, but I've got lovely, very moldy coffee grounds. I leave these containers on my counter and I fill them as I use them. So some of these grounds sit here for a while before I finally get around to using them in the bins. But that's not a problem. They will eat them all the same. But because these have been sitting, like they're hard and with that mold, um, they're definitely going to be able to benefit from a little bit of moisture added so that it doesn't dry out in hunks like it did in portions of the bin that we just fed. Um, I was going to feed two of these big containers. I'm not. I'm just going to feed this one. So I'll dump the rest out. And there is some moisture here in the bottom. But for some reason, coffee grounds just dry out so, so easily. So um, even though this right here appears really wet and I can squeeze and get stuff out of it, it's, it's kind of deceiving. 
it's definitely deceiving. So uh, I don't want to just trust that it's going to be wet enough. So I'm sprinkle a little bit more on my dry mix. And moldy coffee grounds stink too. I don't know why. I love coffee, but they don't smell like coffee. They, they're kind of rancid smelling. Um, maybe that is just the the mold smell. I don't don't particularly like it. So I am going to put a little bit more dry bedding on top, simply to give the worms extra area to live in. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pump sprayer, spray this down a little bit, and then we'll mix and cover the castings over the top. I'm just moistening this down. The castings will help hold in the moisture as well, and the fact that we mixed in some bedding beneath, that should also help. But I just wanted to make sure that we did provide enough water that there's a, a lower probability of things drying out to the point where they struggle to move into it. You will notice with all of my feedings of all of my bins, I really do try to always leave an escape area, which in this case would be to the left here, where we're not actively feeding, that if anything was bothering the worms um, or it was got too dry, they could move to the other, the other side. So I, I try to practice that, um, you know, to keep things comfortable for the worms. But the only real systems I feel comfortable feeding all the way through the system and I don't worry about the worms are the continuous flow throughs because there's a lot more depth to them. So they tend to be a bit more forgiving. But I'm just going to spread the rest of this stuff out on top, cover it back up, and I'm going to kind of shift this uh, bubble wrap kind of far over this side to hold that moisture in. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Let me know what you think. Drop those comments below. Let me know what you're thinking so far, if you're surprised with the results or if this is what you expected. Subscribe if you're not a member of my community yet. I would love to have you, and I'll be back to talk with you guys real soon. Have a great day.